right guys welcome back onto the next episode but before we continue i hope you've been enjoying the deeper dive into each individual product so in the line of progression we're going to be talking today about the yum foam so when we initially sat around the table with the team and we decided that yum foam is going to be the next product in development we had to decide what is the spec sheet that we wanted to kind of tweak with the yum foam because as you're aware there's foams that are thicker the thinner looser gel consistency alkaline based ph neutral i mean i can keep on going so, so um, when people say all foams are the same they are completely incorrect because some foams can strip some foams can almost add stuff to the car they could be neutral non-neutral thick thin they could be designed more for the whole decon process there's a lot of variations in foams obviously you can obviously add seven different variants together into one form you can have two variants in one form so it really depends so with our form what we decided to do is we wanted to make it thick to a point where the thickest foam just imagine this you were to spray it on the car and the big kind of clumps of foam will cascade down on each other so like a snowball effect and believe it or not that thickness of foam is actually no good because the thicker the clumps go down the car, it actually takes the weight of it down with it. So there is no dwell time. The whole purpose of foam is dwell time. Now, the thinnest foam as well, where you spray it on and within probably 30 seconds, the car looks like it's almost dry. Again, dwell time. So with ours, it le leaves a really nice thick blanket that will eventually start, well, first of all, hitting and dwelling and then coming down the car and in essence, what a foam should do on a protected car, it should not dissolve, remove anything because no product can just hit something and just dissolve it. The whole purpose of a foam is the film that is left behind after the initial pressure rinse. It needs to be softened enough to then when you do again another pressure rinse, that secondary film gets removed. So just for transparency purposes, obviously my PF22.2 bottle, you can see I've got 150 mil. So if you look at the notches on the on the cannon, each notch is 50 mil. So 50, 100, 150 mil, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be filling the rest of this reservoir with water, and this solution will be ready to be hit onto the car. So now that the car is rinsed, again, the whole purpose of the rinse is, again, it's not ever going to remove 100% of anything. Even if your car is the most protected car in the world, the whole point of the rinse is to get the contaminants of so pollen, dust, dirt, all that sort of stuff, where water can get rid of it. You don't want to waste a good product attacking a product, oh, attacking contamination that is potentially removable by water. So what could have been removed is being removed. And now obviously, give all chemicals a good shake. Now, PF22 on an SGS28 gun, obviously this is the ultimate version with ours. I like to knock it all the way up, so in terms of the thickest foam consistency, and then we're gonna foam. Now what you see right now is, as I said, it's thick, but it's not shaven foam thick. So it's moving. Can you see all the drip marks here? They're now softening. And again, if there's anything that is loose, it's, the weight of the foam is gonna bring it down enough. Again, it's gonna be on here, weather dependent, hopefully, you know, we are, it's currently 27 degrees, but it's overcast. So it's warm, but it's not direct sun warm, if you know what I mean. So again, it's bringing it down. As soon as you start to see clear patches of paintwork, and you can see the edge of the foam starting to kind of dry on, or not dry on, to dry out, at that point, you know it's time to rinse. Now it's been around seven minutes, and as you can see, this, the foam is still dripping. It's doing exactly what it wants to do. But like I said, can you see here, it's just, a tad bit starting to reveal clear paintwork and at this point 
you can probably wait, I'd say, I don't know, safely about 30 to 60 seconds more. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually rinse it. So again, top down, people always say, well, when you're rinsing foam off, you have to go bottom up because you're gonna dilute the formula. <sighs> it's, it's wrong. Well, it's not wrong, but it's not super right either. It's, you need to get into a good habit of rinsing top down, whether you're doing foam rinses, normal rinses, because at the end of the day, when you're diluting the formula, apparently rinsing top down, it's been already on here for, like I said, seven minutes. You don't need any more dilution or any more dwell time. It's time to rinse. So you want to get the foam off the car as effectively as you can. So top down, so you don't, because don't forget, you might accidentally push this level dirt. So again, this is going to be the dirtiest part of the car to here you have a bad moment and you forget about it and then you go and start rinsing something else so now the dirtiest part of the dirt is here and then you're going to go directly into the wash stage scratch so again good habits just stick to the basics without trying to implement some nasa amazing formula to how to pre-rinse your car five percent better top down and you'll be golden So, panel has been pre-rinsed, it's been foamed, you're letting the product and the chemicals and active raw materials within it dwell, break it down, loosen it. This final rinse that you've just seen me perform has removed the other 70, 80%, 90%, it really depends what state the car is in. Now, is the car clean? No, it's not. This is where you now go and execute your two bucket method because the last 5, 10, 15% of dirt will require manual agitation. That is just the way the world is and, and that's the way the world will always work. Unless you're using a completely unsafe, caustic, you know, ridiculous like rip through type of thing, um, a traffic flow remover and that's not what you want to do because it's going to be taking other things with it so like your brake calipers paint potentially is going to stain it your wheels are going to stain the gloss black trim the paint's going to stain so now you've done a, the safest thing you can do correct um, or, or go and perform the usual two bucket method again top down follow the basic steps and after that you're going to give it a final rinse and then you go and continue with the final stages of your detail but that is the foam right it's very simple it's not rocket science and it works it simply works there's a reason why you have to do a couple of rinses and a foam and all of these steps because it's been proven to work in order to maintain a car's appearance to the highest gloss kind of readings and the effects that it has on your eyes this step is one of the most crucial so i hope you've enjoyed it again i'm going to link everything that i've used the gun the nozzle assemblies the pf22.2 the yum foam all of these things you you can mix them up as and how you like of course if you already don't have them but in terms of the foam this car has actually just come back from um, a trip so kelly has been to london and back a couple of times this week for business um so obviously it's peppered with flies it's peppered with your usual summer dirt as i call it so like dust and stuff like that but because the heat has been here it's kind of ingrained anything so it's you know it, it's worked well and i'm ready to go and perform um the next steps with the young wash but anyway guys as as always i hope you've enjoyed it and i will catch you on the next one and that's where we're going to cover the young wash system cheers guys and take care i'll see you on the next one